Don't Starve Together's most recent update in the Return of Them content line has dropped, named She Sells Sea Shells. What? Did you think I would intentionally pronounce the name wrong? Try to, to make a funny joke? Well, frick you! This is a certified joke free zone. No funnies allowed. This video will cover everything added in the Seashells update except for the Crab King, which also happens to be the majority of the information. I really didn't want to split this video in half, but otherwise it would be really, really long and no one would watch the whole thing. So let's have at it. The timestamps to the different segments are in the description and should also appear on the video player. The first piece of content added in She Sells Seashells is the return of everyone's favourite crustacean from Shipwrecked, the Wascali Wobsters. Wobsters will exit their dens, which appear near coastlines, during the dusk and night time, and can be fished up in order to prepare delicious meals. Lobster bisque is made with one live lobster, one ice and two filler, which can include anything, even twigs. Lobster bisque restores 60 health, 25 hunger and 10 sanity, making an excellent healing food. Lobster dinner similarly requires one live lobster, one butter and two filler, excluding meat, ice and fish. As above, two twigs will work for filler. Lobster dinner restores 60 health, 37.5 hunger and 50 sanity, making it very similar to the bisque except better for sanity and slightly better for hunger. Since wobster dens always appear near the ocean's edge, and wobsters themselves are highly easy to catch, as they don't even fight back when being caught, they can make for an excellent health source, as little else is needed to make a 60 health dish. Near the lunar island, a spookier variant of the classic wobster will appear, offshore from the archipelago and beach biomes. They spawn from wobster dens that appear near the island's edge, although they appear to have been corrupted by the moon in some way. Lunar Wobsters can be caught the same way as regular Wobsters, although they do not reward the catcher with any food, as they only drop a shard of moon glass upon death, which does provide another way to renew the resource alongside bath bombs. Both variants of Wobster can be dropped on the ground and kept as a pet, if not allowed to escape back in the ocean. There isn't much point to this, but they can make for a fun little addition to your base. Two more fish also make an appearance, the Scorching Sunfish and the Ice Bream. Both of them only appear during their respective seasons, summer and winter, and act as a permanent source of heat and cold, drastically reducing or lowering the player's temperature, when in their inventory or on the ground next to them. Obviously there's no point to this in the seasons that the fish are caught in, but due to the freshness restoring capabilities of the tin fishing bin, they can be stored across the year and used in the opposite season as a sort of infinite durability thermal stone. The fish only last one day in every character's inventory though, so this is only really useful as Wirt, whose fish extending perk allows her to keep each one for five days. If you catch two or three of each fish variant and cycle between them using the tin fishing bin, Wirt can stay cool or hot indefinitely with no need for any other clothing or items. So through this weird series of attributes comes a great way to ignore temperature completely as Wirt, although this strategy will only really work late game as it takes a fair amount of setup. Somewhere out on the ocean, on another fragment of the lunar island, lies a lonely hermit, Crab. Pearl is pining after her ex-beloved, who has left her in place of the moon. She will initially be grumpy towards the player, but will eventually warm up to their complete quests and other tasks for her. Before Pearl herself is encountered, the player will find messages in a bottle floating in the ocean. The first one found always reveals the location of Pearl. Subsequent ones will either reveal the location of a buried treasure, or some tasty flavour text. Hmm. Be sure to keep the empty bottles after you've read the message inside. They're a valuable trading resource used to barter with Pearl for items and blueprints. One of these blueprints is to craft a pinch and winch, or, as I like to call it, the chest uplifting machine. This contraption can be used to uplift buried treasure chests, as the name implies, as well as debris appearing around Pearl's island, which is one of her friendship quests. In order to scoop up your prized treasure slash garbage, sail over the top of it and then use the chest uplifting machine. Scooping up ocean debris is janky, as the winch itself must be positioned roughly above the item, which can be hard as you can't see exactly where the item is. Placing the machine near the edge of your boat is recommended to make this process easier. The winch can be used to uplift sunken chests revealed by messages and bottles. Be sure to scoop these up whenever you find them, as they can contain a variety of preset goods, ranging from basic resources and boat related stuff, to ruins gear and even rare items such as gems. In order to increase your friendship level with Pearl, there are a number of tasks that the player can complete. Increasing this level will unlock more trading opportunities where the player can exchange empty bottles for numerous blueprints, new tackle types, and other miscellaneous items. At maximum level, she will reward the player with a special trinket that has a special use. More on that later. On an off note, I've recently started streaming a lot on Twitch, pretty much every one day at 1pm GMT time, so long as I'm not exhausted or my internet decides to commit suicide. I don't have anything funny to say here, so just just go and follow me, please. Please, I'm begging you. Future Fredo here. I'd also recommend that you join my Discord server at this link. 
If you're one of the kind and sexy individuals who sub to me on Twitch, connect your Twitch account to your Discord account, and then join this server to get a unique hoisted role to show your support. There currently aren't any sub emotes yet, but I have some in the works that'll be added soon. By connecting your accounts, you'll be able to use these emotes once they exist in any Discord server that allows external emotes, which is most of them, even without Discord Nitro. Oh, and you also get the highly desirable reward of my eternal gratitude. Seriously though, thanks. Also, I've already been bombarding you with plugs and links and stuff, so you know what? Why don't you like and subscribe? There, I said it. Ugh, that sounded awful. Anyway, future Fredo out. See you in the present! The tasks to complete in order to raise friendship level are... <gasps> Upgrading Pearl's house. There are three different upgrade levels, and each level can be completed similarly to upgrading the floor of Paul Stern or Merm King's tapestry. The first level needs 10 cookie cutter carapaces and 10 boards. This one is the most tedious upgrade, the 10 carapaces requiring a lot of cookie cutters to be felled. The second tier needs 10 marble and 10 ropes, which is relatively simple and can be easily completed when the player feels like it. The third and final tier needs 5 moon rocks and 10 cactus flowers, meaning the player must wait until someone to fully repair the house. Each repair level of the house gives one level of friendship. All other tasks give one level per completion, including repetitions. The rest of the tasks are as follows Drying 6 meat items in the hermit's drying racks at a time. This task can be repeated if Pearl eats all the meats. Placing 8 berry bushes anywhere on the island. Can't be repeated. Placing 10 flowers on the island. Can't be repeated. While you can plant the flowers anywhere, it's recommended to plant them closer to the bee box to maximize honey production. Pearl does not harvest the box herself, and you are free to do so. Fishing up all the junk in the water around Pearl's island using the cum. The rubbish does not reappear, so this task cannot be repeated. Giving an umbrella to Pearl while it's raining. Giving a body slot insulation clothing item while it's snowing. Giving a flower salad to Pearl, this task refreshes once every 10 days. Giving certain heavy fish, this also unlocks new lure adverts respected to the fish. Finally, giving any 5 heavy ocean fishes, excluding fish from the previous task. A heavy fish is one whose weight is in the top 30% of the range of possible ways for that specific fish. These last two tasks are generally the most time consuming. It's possible to get Pearl to max friendship level without doing any of the fishing quests, however, every other quest must be completed. <sighs> At higher levels, Pearl's speech text gets redder, representing her growing friendship with the player. She'll also dance alongside them. At friendship level 1, blueprints for the shell beach turf on Pearl's island, and the cum will be unlocked for trade. At level 3, the bird feather floats in the tackle box, an item that can be used to store tackle, will be unlocked. At level 6, Pearl's advanced lures will be unlocked. At level 8, the two bird boss lures will be unlocked, as well as fish food, a unique item that can be thrown and will attract nearby fish, as well as create new shoals if there aren't many nearby. At level 9, a larger version of the tackle box is unlocked. At each level of friendship, Pearl will give you a bundle of thanks, which usually contains a number of shell bells or other rewards, such as lures that may relate to the quest or the rewards unlocked. Shell bells are decorative items that can be tuned by right-clicking when placed. When walked past, they'll play whatever note has been preset, making them sort of a Don't Starve style note block. Use them to create music. Interestingly, Wigford can identify the exact notes that the bells are tuned to by examining them. If you're planning on making a musical masterpiece, switch to Wigford to make this process easier. Alternatively, shell bells can be hammered to return one broken shell, which can be crafted into shell beach turf. Excess turf can, of course, be burnt, meaning that Pearl's rewards can be indirectly used as fuel. Interestingly, the broken shell item that can now be obtained is actually the same as the broken shells dropped by Slurtles and Snurtles in the caves, although the item dropped by those mobs will have the new texture. Finally, at level 10, Pearl will give you her Pearl, which is used to begin a more difficult version of the Crab King fight with unique rewards. The Crab King will be covered in an upcoming video. The addition of a walking and talking NPC in Don't Starve is definitely an interesting addition. Sure, we did have the pig merchants in Hamlet, but they didn't really feel like NPCs, instead more like regular enemies able to be slaughtered, exploited, and lacking in any individuality or depth. Pearl is essentially the opposite of this, having well-written lines and complex character quests. It's slightly jarring to have a fully-fledged RPG-esque NPC and don't starve, and it definitely solidifies the new direction that DST is headed in, although there's enough to talk about there for a video on its own. Overall, Pearl does make a pretty good addition to Don't Starve Together. She is fun, well-designed, and is a breath of fresh air in a way. My main issues with this update all regard Mr. Krabs over there. I could frankly rant all day about how bad of a boss fight it is. But that is a topic for a different video. Again, apologies for splitting this video into a two-parter, but otherwise it would have been an absolute monster, definitely approaching 30 minutes. So thanks for watching, and Clay, I swear to god, if you fix the Crab King before I make the next video, I'm going to have an aneurysm. <laughs> See you next time. Don't Start Together's most recent update in the Return of Them content line has dropped, named Shhh, fuck.